Hello, and welcome back to the English Grammar Course, taught by me, Marion, your personal English tutor. Let's begin this lesson with a review of the future perfect continuous tense, then move on with the zero conditional. We use the future perfect continuous tense to imagine ourselves in the future looking back into the past. I'll have been feeling sick for a whole week by tomorrow. Or for an action or event that can begin any time in the past, present, or future, but that must always end in the future. Next weekend, I will have been working at this bar for a full year. To form this tense, we follow the structure subject, will have been, present participle. I don't think it's coming. In seven minutes, we'll have been waiting for the train for an hour. To form negative sentences, we use the construction subject plus will plus not, both of which can be contracted to form won't, plus have been plus the present participle. We won't have been studying long enough to pass this test. To ask questions in the future perfect continuous, we use the pattern will, subject, have been, present participle. Will she have been waiting a long time for me? All right, let's practice. Can you fill in the gaps with the correct use of the future perfect continuous tense? In June, Lola will have been living in South Africa for a year. Next month, we'll have been dating for three years. By the time you arrive in Hanoi, you'll have been flying for 15 hours. When I get to Colombia, I will have been traveling for five months. My mother will have been making all the decisions on this trip. Great work! Now we can move on to today's topic, the zero conditional. A quick introduction on conditionals in general. We use conditional sentences to describe possible situations or events and use the conjunction if. We indicate the possible result or consequences of a particular action, either in the past, present, or future. Clauses with if indicate something that may or may not happen. In English, we have four types of conditional sentences. The zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional, and third conditional. So let's get started today with a lesson on the zero conditional. We use the zero conditional to make general statements and 
facts about the world. These sentences always indicate something that is true now or always true. For example, if you exercise, you are healthy. We also use the zero conditional to express a situation that is real and possible. If you mix yellow and blue, you get green. We form the zero conditional with two clauses. If plus present simple and the present simple. For example, you are not hungry if you eat. You are not hungry is the main clause and is comprised of the present simple. If you eat is a subordinate clause led by the subordinate conjunction if and it uses the present simple eat. Another example, if my daughter is sick, I usually get sick too. We have the verbs is and get, which are both in the present simple. In the zero conditional, or more generally with all the conditionals, the order of the clauses is not important. Compare these sentences. The ground gets wet if it rains. If it rains, the ground gets wet. These two sentences have exactly the same meaning and the verbs are in the same tense. The only difference is the punctuation. Let's have a quick refresher on clauses and punctuation as we learned in chapter one of this course. If you use a subordinating conjunction at the beginning of a sentence, then you must follow the subordinating clause with a comma. For example, if you heat water to 100 degrees, it boils. It boils is the main clause. It is a sentence in itself. It can stand alone. If is a subordinating conjunction. And if you heat water to 100 degrees, as it is a subordinate clause. As it is placed before the main clause, we place a comma after it. When using a subordinating conjunction or clause after a main clause, we do not use a comma. Water boils if you heat it. Water boils is the main clause. We do not use a comma between it and the subordinating clause. It is also possible to use the conjunction when instead of if and keep the same meaning in your sentence. For example, you are not hungry when you eat. Compare these two sentences. Flowers die if they don't get enough water. Flowers die when they don't get enough water. These two sentences mean the exact same thing. We can also change the order of the clauses with the conjunction when. If flowers don't get enough water, they die. When flowers don't get enough water, they die. Let's practice. Can you choose the correct answer from the multiple choices?
If I'm late to work, my boss gets angry. When she's sad, she watches a movie. Remember, we use the present simple, and therefore it. The subject verb agreement must be respected. She is a third person singular pronoun, therefore we add an s or es to the end of verbs. You get good grades in school when you work hard. I listen to music when I'm sad. If they don't drink water, they get thirsty. <laughs> Always look left and right if you want to cross the street. When I'm tired, I go to bed. Great work, and remember, do not use the zero conditional to refer to a specific time, like the past or future. We only use it to refer to general facts and truths. Now, we can also use the zero conditional. With the imperative in the main clause to give orders, we use the clauses if or when plus present simple plus the main clause with the imperative tense. For example, if Beth calls, don't answer the phone. Dry the dishes. When you finished cleaning them, the imperative tense is very similar to the present simple tense. We don't add an s to third person singular pronouns. Let's practice. Can you fill in the gaps with the correct verbs or words? Tell the teacher if he is bothering you. Ask Lena if she wants to come over for dinner. Ask is the imperative. Wants. Is the present simple in the subordinating clause? If you want to watch the movie, meet me at five p.m. Want. Is a verb in the present simple, part of the subordinating clause that starts with if. Meet is the imperative; it gives the order.
If we get lost, we can just ask someone for help. Run fast if the tiger comes towards you. Great work! Now it's time for our task-based activity. Here is an extract from an article educating people on how to act if you encounter a leopard or other wild animals. It is from the website wildtrails.in. We will read the text together and you will have three minutes to identify the uses of the zero conditional. Are you ready? What to do when you see a leopard on a street? The cat will come onto your land or property if there is food there. Keep your surroundings devoid of garbage as this attracts dogs and other livestock, which in turn attracts the leopards. Be alert, especially after dark when leopards are most active. Avoid going into the thick vegetated area after dark. If you have to move around in the dark, Ensure that you have a companion with you. Carry a torch and a stick. Play loud music so that they will not mistake you for another animal. You see, leopards never attack people who appear bigger in size. Therefore, children and adults sitting in a crouched position are the people who are in the greatest potential danger. Don't leave your kids unattended. If the cat is in your immediate area, be calm and allow it to leave on its own. Don't panic. Finally, don't form a crowd around a leopard. Don't scream at it or attack it. The last thing you want to do is frighten a cornered leopard because it will make it much more likely to injure someone in a desperate bid to escape. All right, three minutes to find the zero conditional. Let's go.
There are two examples of the zero conditional in this text. If you have to move around in the dark, is the subordinating clause. Ensure that you have a companion with you, is the main clause. If the cat is in your immediate area, is the subordinate clause. Be calm and allow it to leave on its own. This is the main clause with the imperative form of the verb be. I would just like to draw attention to the first sentence of this text. The cat will come onto your land or property if there is food there. You may have thought, is this an example of the zero conditional? But it is actually the first conditional, which we will learn more about in our next lesson. Now it's time for review. We use the zero conditional to express permanent truths or facts. For example, ice cream melts if it's in the sun. Or to express general habits. If I'm hungry at 4 p.m., I eat a snack. We form the zero conditional with a subordinate clause using the subordinate conjunction if and a main clause in the present simple tense. If you don't add sugar, coffee tastes bitter. If I don't have my glasses, I can't drive. We can switch the order of the clauses and the sentence will keep its meaning. Coffee tastes bitter if you don't add sugar. I can't drive if I don't have my glasses. The only difference when changing the order of the clauses is the punctuation. Add a comma after a subordinating clause if it is at the beginning of the sentence. If the subordinating clause is at the beginning of the sentence, add a comma after it. Do you see what I did there? We can use the subordinating conjunction when instead of if and the sentence will keep its meaning. When you're sad, eat chocolate to feel better. Eat chocolate to feel better when you're sad. We can change the order of the clauses just like we do with the conjunction if. We can also use the zero conditional with the imperative to give orders. When dad arrives, everyone wish him a happy birthday. Wish is the imperative form of this verb. Well done! We did it! We've completed our first lesson on conditionals. Next up, the first conditional. See you soon!